Hey everybody, it's Mr. G, and today I'm going to talk about putting the text behind Shrek. All right, so how do you put text behind an image, an image that's already existing in a 2D world? How do you make it seem more 3D and put something behind it or in front of it? Um, well, I'm going to show you in Paint.net. All right, here we go. First, we're going to get our image. In this case, I found a picture of Shrek, and I just I just went online. And I wrote Shrek. Now I chose a background. Now you could pick any picture, okay? But if you choose, for example, if you choose this picture, you're going to have to to delete all of this background behind Shrek. Now I'm actually going to do that. I'll do that next. So for those of you that are interested, you can fast forward and find that. But for now, I'm going to start with uh, one of these pictures where uh, Shrek is got a, a nice white background and it's easy it's gonna be easy to delete that background so I'm gonna right click and copy image this is in Google Chrome okay and I'm using paint.net version 4.012 here okay so I'm gonna just go ahead and go file uh, I'm gonna show you that file new and I'm gonna paste this in and it notice it's already the right size and I'm gonna say control V paste then I'm going to shrink my size if it's too big. For my class, like if you've got an image that's like 3,000, that's too big for, you know, the assignment we're doing. Um, 700, I'm going to just shrink it just a little bit. I'm going to go to image, resize. You should always just go image, resize, and look at it. And if it looks like it needs to be resized, I like to check the check mark so that everything doesn't get squishy or weird. And I'm going to make this, I don't know, 600. Okay. There we go. And it doesn't look like it changes much on the screen, and that's okay. What matters is the actual size change. Now I'm going to use the magic wand. I'm going to click on the white. Now here's the deal. You're going to change your tolerance to see how much white it selects. I'm going to click in the white again. Yeah, still tolerance to up. Now if you just drag your tolerance, you're going to see, look, now it's not selecting parts of his body. So if I hit the delete key, boom, I get the checkerboard. Now the only spot I'm missing it right here is under his arm. So I'm going to just click there and hit delete. And now one more spot right there. Bam. All right. So now I have deleted the background behind Shrek. And that gives me the ability to do lots of cool things. Now I'm going to move him down. I can position him wherever I want. I can grab a corner and I can rotate him. That could actually be fun. Might stick him in kind of at an angle here. Okay. And, and then I'm going to add another layer. And this is how you add something behind or in front of. I'm going to drag that layer underneath. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't see that. Okay, so over here, so I added a, I'll do, I'll do it again. Okay, so I've got my Shrek. I'm going to click a new layer, and it starts on top. I'm going to drag it beneath Shrek so I can put something behind him. And now I'm going to fill the background again with white. So I've got a white background behind Shrek, which we already had. But now I have control because, really, I can turn that on and off. I could turn Shrek on and off. Now I'm going to add another layer, and I'm going to, that actually put it where I wanted it. I want that behind Shrek but above the white. I'm going to click the text tool, and I am going to click here, and I'm going to make this black text, and I'm going to write something like Shrek text, and I'm going to make it nice and big, okay, and um, maybe not that big, make it the, the right size to fit on the screen. You, you can adjust your text, and I'm going to put it so that it's a little behind him, but not so much behind him that, um, that he doesn't... Uh, that he doesn't, you can't see it, okay? And there you go. Now I have text behind. Now I find this works better with thicker fonts. And of course, if you know me, uh, well, Cooper Black is a pretty thick font. Oh, that's a good, that actually looks like the Shrek font. So maybe I'll use that, okay. So I'm gonna make this a little smaller then. And um, I'm gonna play with that size until I get a size that, that fits my screen is nice and thick. Um, and then maybe I will play with the, uh, I can actually play with the color until I'm happy with the color. And um, yeah, sure, why not? I might go with red. It's a little behind him. So now I've got text that's behind Shrek. And if I, if I just use, uh, you know, maybe if I just wrote Shrek and made his name super big, I don't know, 200, that's a little too big. Um, 150 maybe, a little too big. How about 120? There we go. So. You could see his name, you could, but it's behind. So there you go. That's how you put things behind because it's just on a separate layer. I could put it in front. So now it's in front. 
Now, if I put the white layer on top, it's going to make everything disappear because it's a solid white layer. If I put the white layer in the middle, the, the red's going to disappear. If I put it on the bottom, there you go. That's how you put text behind something. And you can put things in front. So if I wanted to put something in front of him or on top of him, like let's say a top hat, I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to write top hat. Let's try it right here. Top hat PNG. Oops. And look at that. Google even knew I typed it wrong. Go to images and I'll find a, yeah, that looks like a good top hat. I wait for it to load. It's got a transparent background. Copy image. Right click copy image. I go back to my pick. I'm going to add a new layer. I want all these on their own layers. And I'm going to put it on top of Shrek because it's the top hat. I'm going to say keep canvas size. This is a very large hat. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is grab my uh, zoom out control and I'm going to I'm going to shrink this and then I'm going to rotate it a little bit so it fits on his head right. Bam. Then I'm going to zoom back in to 100%. <laughs> Actually looks kind of cool, slightly over his eyes. And enter. So now I've got a top hat on Shrek. Um, so there you go. There's the basics of working with layers. The other thing I'm going to suggest and, and in my class, I'm going to want you to really require you to do this, is double click on the layers and name those layers. Because the more layers you get, the more complicated it's going to get. And you're going to want to be able to know what they are. So and if you're never sure, just double click, turn a layer on and off, and make sure you know what layer you've got. And if you ever have problems, that's another thing you can do is turn layers on and off. So I'm going to put this and call this text. And then I'm going to call this white BG for background. And now I've got all my layers, and I can always change where they are. So I can put the, the hat behind him. That looks weird, I think. So I'm going to put it in front, and I can move any part of any layer. So I can always I can click on the text layer. Um, the only other thing to pay attention to is if you see this dotted line. Now watch. If I were to move Shrek the text right now, you'll notice that it chopped off uh, the other part. So I'm going to hit Control-Z. You need to hit the Escape key or Control-D, and that D selects it gets rid of the marching ant selection and that will give me the ability to um, uh, move the uh, move things without them causing a problem now Shre the reason Shrek is cut off also is because that was off literally off the edge of the picture so that part of it is just it's not going to be there and I could rotate the text by going to the corner and turning it like that and that could be really cool too um, and I can actually make this bigger by grabbing a corner now if you stretch it out too much it's going to look weird it's going to get uh, it's going to start getting pixely if you've noticed it's uh it's already pixely because it's it's an image but the, the the text is going to get more pixeled as i go but it doesn't look too bad okay so that's part one i'm going to call this uh we'll just put a big fat text here that says part two we'll make that really big okay and i'm going to just stick that on the screen for a minute so this is part two part two is how do i do a cleanup of an image like this picture. How do I get that picture and then put something behind that? Okay, well, let's, uh, let's go through the process. We're going to copy image. I'm going to go back in to paint.net. I'm going to go file, new. <coughs> I'm going to say okay. I'm going to paste it. And the first thing, I'm not going to resize this yet. I, I guess you could. I'm going to leave it its original size right now and clean it up. It's not too big. So, um, Phase one here, uh, you could try the magic wand um, and then try the tolerance. You're going to see that because the colors are all very um, close, they're not, there's not a solid, easy to see. Now, that, that, I could kind of hit delete for that. I could click over here and, you know, uh, it's honestly, that's going to do more harm than good, in my opinion. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the, uh, this magic lasso I guess I guess I the lasso and I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna zoom in sorry let's zoom in here and then I'm gonna use my drag handles on the bottom and I'm gonna go as close to the edge as I can and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of draw a line around him like this and then I'm gonna pull it out and what that does is it allows me to basically chop off and I'm going to hit delete, boom, and it deletes that big section right there. Um, and the reason this was so hard is because he's got brown, he's wearing brown, and there's a brown background. It makes it very tricky for the computer to see the difference there. So I'm going to just do another big chop, and I'm going to clean up around Shrek. 
this is this is really the hardest part of this process okay so I will uh, come back after I've cleaned that up I want to make one note with this tool I'm going to show you what I've done so far um, you, you really need to do it in little chunks uh, it doesn't work well if you try to do the whole thing and uh, I'm actually I'm not exactly sure the best way to explain why that is but um, if you do like I'm just going to take a section of his fingers and then drag all the way over and up and, and around and then hit delete. Then if I want to, I can go back in with the eraser tool and get these chunks. And you can get big chunks without, you know, but um, I find that it works a lot better to, and I'm going to zoom back one, two, three, so I can see the edges here. Um, anyway, that's that's a good thing to know about this particular tool. Okay, now that I have gotten all the way around his body, and cleaned it out. Now this is the f I I have fun doing this, but I just I like to select the eraser and make it a nice big size, and I like to go in and just erase it. Um, I don't know why I find that personally satisfying. Uh, you may or may not. I also suggest letting go of your mouse button every once in a while. So if you make a mistake and accidentally erase his hand, you don't erase all the uh, erase work you've just done and and then you're going to put a white background behind it just like we did before and you're going to just see how well you erased everything so if i just add another layer boom i'm going to fill it with white or green boom then i can actually see you see there's a couple spots here's a couple spots here so i'm going to get my eraser i'm going to go back to the shrek layer which i'm going to double click on and name i'm going to go back and i'm going to clean up oh some of those are <laughs> sorry i'm seeing smudges on my screen um, let's see which ones are actual. Oh, I think that here. I'm going to zoom in here. Whoosh. Yep, there's there's one. And some of this is just little marks. Now I, d I didn't do a perfect job erasing around him here. Uh, I probably could have done better, um, but for for me it's going to work. And there you go. And that's how you take any image and clean up the background and then you can do what I did in the and I'm not going to do this again but you can go back and figure out how to add your own text behind Shrek the Shrek text assignment have a great day